Jeez. That's a big one, bro. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Hey guys, it's uh, Connery from Out of Work Outdoors again today, and today I want to do a review on a lure I've been waiting to do, but I wanted to make sure I had everything covered before I did this review. Everything from how to modify it, trailers, where to buy it for maybe half price, and the reason why I think it's so expensive, and my two setups that I really like. Okay, so uh, the lure we're talking about today is a chatterbait. If you followed our channel, if you follow the bass side of the channel, you know that all of our all of my tournaments, the chatterbait has played a major part of it. Uh, I could honestly say that during the summer dog days, every single one of my giant bass came on a chatterbait, except for one. One came punching a one and a half ounce weight, but that's a different story for another day. Everything else came offshore grass, uh, chatterbait came on the white also. So let's get into it. Um, so, so what is a chatterbait? For the guys that are new to the channel, uh, or new to bass fishing, a chatterbait is a bladed jig. It's been dubbed the chatterbait. It's marketing terms, but it's basically your jig Arky style with a blade in front that wobbles as you reel it. Now you're thinking, okay, so what's what's so good about that? The good thing about that is you're able to get a crankbait vibration, but then you have a one aught hook on it. And you're thinking, well, that's 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 not nothing new. Uh, there's scrounger heads. There's you know things like that. Well, the thing is about this blade idea is it deflects off grass and it cuts grass very, very well. So that's really what it, where, where it really shines is in the grass. But you can fish rocks and things like that too. Well, if you pay attention to the channel, uh, I think I have four or five videos out out now that uh, I'll put them in the descriptions below. But uh, where the Chatterbait has given me a key bite, you know, to do well in a tournament. Um, we fish the Oklahoma Kayak Trail, where the best in Oklahoma always come out. And we also do the Toyota, not Toyota, the Tulsa Bassathon. Uh, every Tuesday night, we call it the Tuesday Night Jackpots. Uh, but it's not truly a jackpot because there is an AOI points uh, thing going on that too. So, all of my wins, or most of my wins, there's somewhere, somehow, a chatterbait has played a role in it. Whether it's revealed fish to me, or it has caught me like a key fish. So, uh, chatterbaits, they, 
it's this is here today. It's it, it is its own category. Z Man has the patent on it. Z Man slash wherever the original creator was, they have a patent on it. That's why this category of bladed jigs, nothing else out there exists because they own it. It's not a spinner bait where everybody can copy the design. There's a patent on the blade hitting the head, and that's the only reason why till today. Other companies have been forced out of the market because they don't have the patents. Striking has recently come to the market, but that's with a license agreement through Z-Man. And the jackhammer was originally made for the Japanese market, built by Evergreen. It'll say Moto on it. And but yet, uh, it was oh, very very oh, popular because Bret Height oh, and Marizo Shimizu, they were one, killing man. it on the Elite That's Series, but we couldn't get our hands Damn. on it. So people were forced to go buy overseas and you can send it in. Well, in order to do well, I think the American market I'll is the that. number one market for bass I'll fishing. So Evergreen had to sign an agreement with Z-Man. This is all speculation, but I'm pretty sure it's like 90% true. Z-Man had to sign a licensing fee with... John, uh, Evergreen had to sign a licensing fee with Z-Man in order to sell it. And the traditional... Chatterbait sells for like three fifty. The, the original three fifty five ninety nine. The elites, the, the upgraded versions of that will go for like eight ninety nine, right? So why the heck is this coming in at fifteen ninety nine? This jackhammer chatterbait. Well, if you think about it, it makes perfect sense. You take eight ninety nine, multiply by two. That's about fifteen ninety nine, right? So I think what it is is Evergreen produces everything, and Z Man just pushes it out the door under a Z-Man product. So that's why in the United States, it's known as the Z-Man jackhammer. Everywhere else outside the United States where there are no patent laws, or well, at least the American United States patent laws do not enforce or can't touch, it's just simply called the evergreen jackhammer. Okay, so if you buy them from a tackle store somewhere else and fly them in, you gotta Google evergreen jackhammer and you'll see it if you're in the united states if you're buying from amazon if you're buying from tech warehouse bass pro wherever it's going to be the z-man jackhammer okay let's get that out the way that's something that i i didn't see anybody cover in any of the other jack jackhammer chatterbait videos on the internet so let's get that out of the way so what makes it so good is it really worth 15.99 man you know what i thought about that long and hard um, it's really not worth fifteen ninety nine. I'll be honest. It's it, it'll definitely it's definitely worth twelve ninety nine, but fifteen ninety nine is a little stretching it. It's stretching it just a bit, but at the same time, it's in a, it's in a class of its own when it, you're comparing it to what's available and what it is. So you have all these chatterbaits that are decently good, and then you have one that's really good. So Z Man by themselves, they they can definitely control the market, so they can put that price where they want it. So $15.99. Evergreen makes their profits and Z-Man makes their profits. So that's why it's $15.99. But is it worth it? <sighs> I still think it's worth it. And I still think it does. It's not really worth it. Just because for, for that price, they're starting to touch the price of exotic lures. You know, the Mega Bass uh, hard baits and even some lower inclined baits and things like that. So it's marketed right there, $15.99. But I'll tell you what, um, in the last two years, I haven't lost that many. And the ones I have lost are due to stupid problems. Uh, whether you are uh, you didn't read high enough and things like that. So that's kind of a user error type thing. And more than likely, you're going to wear the hooks out before you're going to lose these things. If you do the modifications, I'm going to reveal here soon too. So what makes a chatterbait, a jackhammer chatterbait, better than a non-jackhammer chatterbait? So this is the chatterbait I have. Let's go through that. This is the one I have. I've had this for a while. This is the JDM model, by the way. That's why it's got a gold blade. I think the American one has a, a silver blade on it. But anyways, they are both exactly the same thing. There's no differences. The coolest thing about this is the weight is labeled right there on the chin. You can see it. It's a half ounce. That is the preferred one, the half ounce. If you're on braid, I'll get to that in a little bit. But, you know, it's also a hand-tied skirt, but the skirt will fall off on you, okay? But the best part of this is it's a very compact bait. 
a the traditional z-man the skirt is a one of those welded skirts so it's, it puffs out a lot and what that does is it, it actually ride causes the bait to ride really high in the water column which which i don't like i like to run my baits real fast so i need them to go deep deep in the water column and the cool thing about this one it is it is designed to run deep and it doesn't rise up very fast so for all the guys that are having problems throwing the traditional jatterbaits that are you know you have to do your own modifications to make it run lower or you have to go to a higher or, or bigger weight stuff like that this actually solves that problem this one is is it's i think it's solely because of the skirt it rides really really low it's got a gamagatsu hook on there the, the hook is a, it's actually pretty good it's a medium wire which is what i prefer i prefer the medium wire uh, a lot of the baits before this one had a real style hook almost like a flipping hook on it i didn't really like that because if you're on I'll talk about rod and reel setups in a bit, but if you're on a braided, a straight braid setup with a flipping stick, then then this might bend out. I'll give you that. It might bend out. Either that or you're going to lose is the clip way before the hook belt bends out. But if you're talking a balanced system, right, a balanced rod, reel, line, everything, this hook is perfect. It is the thinner the hook, the easier it's going to, you know, penetrate. Um... And it doesn't have a problem penetrating as long as you have the right setup. Okay, so with this setup, uh, the trailer here is a Z-Man Razor Shad. It's the only trailer that I run because of that. It's elastic. Elastec does not really give up on you. There are some special ways you have to store it, but, you know, overall, very happy with it. This setup right here is why I did... 95% of my damage on this whole year. White and chartreuse with a gold blade. Well, actually, the color doesn't even matter, but and it's also in the half ounce. The half ounce is good because it throws a little bit farther, and when you reel and kill it, it doesn't fall real slow. It falls real fast, and with this blade on it, every time it falls, it falls in a different direction. So it causes a lot of reaction bites by doing that. Uh, good keeper, so, oh yeah, hand tied, uh, after about 10 or 20 bites, the skirt will fall off on you. Every single one of my jackhammers have done that. So what you want to do is, as soon as you get them, just tie them again. I know. They need, they need some quality control on that, or they need to take up some metal wire and wrap that. The decoy ring here, not too fond of. I've lost a couple of chatterbaits because that ring has opened up. So, well, okay, once again, <laughs> you know, that's kind of my fault too. Because when you get these rings, crimp this down. The hooks, crimp them down. And also put a split ring in front of it, okay? So that's one thing that I do. And before I started doing that, I would tie directly to the, dig, the, 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 the keeper, not the keeper, the clip. And for some reason, I kept on snapping. You know, the line would snap. I think it's because of vib the vibration so much. The vibration is uh, so crazy that the the knot is actually being sacrificed. So you put a clip on it or another ring on it, another split ring on it, it solves that problem. Okay, and then the keeper, the keeper is a double, double barbed keeper. So there's one on the bottom and there's one on top. Now, if you run the traditional Zacco uh, trailer on it, it basically cuts it. It's not very good. You'll go through about a pack of uh, Zaccos a day. But with the with the Razor Shad, you're pretty much good. One per day or Yo, multiple what my trips. Grip at? So that's how I like it. It catches right everything. Here. That's, that's <laughs> the best part about the floor. It catches give everything boga, from yo, 12 inches to like... 23 <laughs> inches. I've caught stripers on this, white bass on this. I've caught oh, every everything catches. Oh, I've that. caught big giant flatheads on this. Let's I mean, flatheads and catfish have caught walleye on it. Damn. It, it's freaking nuts. What about I mean, that? I'm it's just, too, it's just man. Really it's crazy. Um, Chatterbait. 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 Okay. Chatterbait. So Ooh. here's the other thing that I think. Here's the major thing. For the, for the guys, if you're just looking at this, and you're comparing crazy, it to another jacket or another chatterbait, you're going to be like, it's the same. But if you're not using it, you don't know why it's that much better. Okay, so look at this, right? Look at this head right here. I hope you guys can see that. The head. The head of the jackhammer right here is dulled out. The paint's missing. That's because the blade 
when it vibrates it hits the head okay so that's a what, what does that do okay so what does that do one it makes a really loud knocking sound so it's like a duh, 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 duh. I'll, sh I'll flash that video in you can hear it when i'm really as raw you can feel the vibrations coming off the head the other thing is when you burn this bait it because the blade is so erratic it'll cause the bait to hunt if the blade is hitting the head so on the other chatter baits that are available and the, the baits that have a ring between the blade and the head it won't hunt it'll, it'll just track true you don't want that. It's like a square bill thing, right? You want the square bills that hunt. The ones that hunt always work better. They don't come back to the boat the same way every time. Same with this. This one hunts when you burn it. When you you just low reel, it tracks straight. When you burn it, it hunts. That's another key thing about this. That I think a lot of other lures, they just they just don't have that little little like ability to do. But that little ability means so much. And then for me, I'm, I'm, I'm on a 7 gear ratio, and I'm burning it you know, most of the times. Uh, so that's that's how you get all your reaction bites. Even on, like, conditions, even on days where the conditions are not right, if you burn it, you can still get reaction bites off of it. So let's talk about my rod, reel, and gear. So this is definitely my favorite. Now, it did not start out as my favorite, but it became my favorite. Okay, so um, this is the... Daiwa Elite Series, Brett Ehler bladed jig rod, it's a 7.4 uh, rod, paired with a, paired with a zillion, a Daiwa zillion SV, you don't, you don't actually need the SV, but it's paired with that, it's a 7.3, I have 30 pound Max Quattro in yellow, and I have about 5 foot liter tied with an FG knot, of 20 pound FC sniper. This setup right here is my go-to setup. Clear water, I don't care. Muddy water, that's the deal right there. Uh, murky water, water that's two and a half foot. It's like it's like that perfect cranking water, right? With grass, Ooh, this is the deal. I've won a couple of tournaments doing that. And as far as retrieves, let's just talk about my other rod and reel setup. So that's the braid setup and the rod this is a very parabolic rod okay so i don't know why but when i first started running this rod i ran it on uh 20 pound fluorocarbon and i would always lose any bass that was bigger than four pounds i would it just didn't have the backbone to set it on fluorocarbon but, no, but once i switched over to braid mm, every time every time huh i got so much footage on that that's crazy too so, come join me man once in a while, they won't hit braid. I don't know why. Chatter bait. Okay, so you gotta have a fluorocarbon yeah, setup yeah, yeah. as well. Okay, so this is the Champion Extreme. Well, not the Champion HP glass. Yep. It's the 736 the CB glass. It was recommended to me by one of my friends that loves the Champion brand. And this is the one I wear. I, if I'm gonna slowly work it through stuff, like just dragging it through grass or if I'm flipping stuff or or like I said, I'm also there's also one there's gonna be those days where they just don't bite the braid. I don't I don't know why. It's not a visual yeah, thing because I have five foot of leader on it, okay? Yeah. You can step it at a ten foot. I've done that before. It's not it's not the visibility of the line, let's put it that way. But for some reason I think it's because they like the the way the fluorocarbon uh, bait like it launches. Because on the braid, you've noticed that when you uh, when, when the bait is coming and it hits grass, it'll just hang up on the grass, it'll cut the grass. The fluorocarbon, it'll hang up on the grass and it'll almost like deflect off of it. Or it'll roll over the grass, put it, so to speak. So the fluorocarbon, I like to throw black and blue. So that's the black and blue once again. I mean, if you look at it, black and blue. The blade, oh yeah, the blade color. I forgot about that. The blade is colored black, but it has peeled off. So that needs work too. That's another reason why I say it's not really worth $15.99. I mean, it's anodized on stainless, but it, it still comes off. There's nothing you can do about it. I don't know why. They need to fix that. I think if we complain enough, they'll, they'll probably fix it. <laughs> but anyways, uh, and like I said, if, if I'm fishing... So I'm, I usually go out with 7.3. I'm trying to get fish to react to the stuff. 
And if they're not, if they're a little sluggish that day, not as willing to chase, you know, drop it down to pure fluorocarbon. Once again, it's 20 pound. I'll go as light as 16 if I need to in open areas. But for the most part, if I'm fishing like five to 10 foot deep, I'm throwing a half ounce, 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon, six gear ratio, tattoo on there, throw whatever you want, but that's what I like. Picked this reel up for cheap too. I think it's a, normally it's 160. I paid $103 for it from Bass Pro because it's a left hand model. They can get rid of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. that's that's the setup for the floral carbon. Okay, so let's talk about retrieves. Uh, retrieves, I primarily have two, and you'll see them in the videos too. That's a tournament, it's yo, either that's one, a tournament. if I get, if I have ideal conditions, meaning a little bit of wind, cloudy conditions, chuck, why? Just burn it. Let them load up, and when it loads up, don't go, you know, trying to crack them. You want them to load, you want to feel it, you give it two good solid reels, and then you just want to lean hard, lean hard to the left or to the right. That's the hook set. There's no this or that. Okay, there's no slack slack line. It. This is not a slack line technique. This is a reel it to it's tight. Get all the stretch out of your rod, and lean. And you want to have a rod that's not a broomstick, okay? Because you imagine there's a blade in the way. The blade, when he crunches down, the blade is literally over the head of the lure. You want the blade to move, say that's the top of the mouth, outside the lips of the fish so the blade, so the hook will catch him. So you need that parabolicness to help it out. So that's why the braid is on a fully parabolic rod and the fluorocarbon is on a more of a cranking rod where it's a... It's more of a 70-30, uh, uh, 70-30 bend type of rod, or even a 60-40, depending on what you like. But you still need that backbone to, to bring that big hook home, okay? So you need something to, 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 to finish off the hook set. So on the if you have a fully parabolic rod, Braid will do that for you. If you have a 70-30 rod, meaning, you know, like 30% of the rod then starts to bend, fluorocarbon will get the blade to leave the mouth of the fish and then the backbone of the rod will finish the job and that's what you got to worry about if you're losing a lot of fish so once i got that dialed down i hardly ever lost any uh any chatterbait fish i mean i went from like when my system wasn't right i went from losing every single big bass to catching 99 percent of those big bass if i heard them like crunch on it and, I, and if I lean hard on them, and if I get them, it's done. It's a done deal. I always got them in a good spot. Uh, you're going to get those where you, you're going to feel a crunch. Uh, it's a reaction bite. You'll feel like it's, just a, it's like a jig bite. And then when you set the hook, nothing. I think those are the fish where they just straight up bite it out of reaction. And they let it go before you even have a chance. Because you're not sweeping it quick. You're just, you know, thump, and then it's nothing. Because he didn't keep it. Because the way it's supposed to work is you're reeling, 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 thump, and you reel, 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 and then you lean hard. That's how you're supposed to set a chattery fish. Okay, so so that's the that's the that's the that's the technique where you bomb it out there and you just reel. You, I do that with both setups. Depending on the day, you're gonna have to judge it for yourself. But then again, my best retrieve is the bomb it out. Especially it's good on the half ounce. You bomb it out. And then you just let it sit. And then you sweep. Bring up the slack. Sweep. Bring up the slack. Sweep. That's that's the cadence I do too. Sweep. One, two. Sweep. One, two. Sweep. One, two. Sweep. That's the deadliest combination I can give you. If you have a hydro wave, run the hydro wave. All. It's just even better, okay? Let's put it that way. I catch about 80% of my fish doing that. Sweep. 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 I'm on grass. Snap it. Sweep. Okay, so that's how that's how I run that pattern. And boy, it's it's good. Chabby's been good to me. All right, let's also talk about the weakness of this lure. The weakness of this lure is it, one is not weedless. There's no weed guard option on it. Okay, so they need to do that. Okay, for that price, they should put two titanium weed guards on it. I think Jackal does it on their GDM bladed jig. I don't. I know because I bought one uh, from Japan, by the way. Uh, the other thing is, without the weed guards, this thing is horrible around stumps and limbs. Okay, 
if you throw it in the stump field, if you keep the rod up real, real high, it'll get you through, you know, 70%. You keep it down, that first stump it hits, it's done. It's done deal. It hooks up every time. It's the worst feeling, too, because it feels like it's a bass. <laughs> so it's like, ooh, it's on. Lean. Stump. What's up? Yeah. Yeah. Lean and stump. So, uh, the recap, yeah, uh, Chatterbait, that's what I got for this year, uh, I'll, I'll you know, um, I'll have all the links of where you can buy all of it, um, I think it's called japantackle.com if you want to buy a bunch, and I think they're priced at $10 or $11 a piece compared to $15.99, it's not worth it to buy one or two, so if you're gonna go the JDM route, you have to buy a whole bunch, so get you... All your buddies to go buy. It. I'll sh I'll shoot the link out to that website. But if you only need two, two or three, or if you need it quickly, you have to go through Amazon and or the local local stores. So I have all the Amazon links down below as well, along as all, along with all my my setups. I'm super confident on these setups. I'll, I'll go anywhere with them. The only thing I haven't figured out is the jackhammers are also available in the three quarter ounce. All the way up to the one and a quarter ounce. That's where a lot of the other chatterbaits don't play. I'm thinking that one and a half ounce is going to play big in the pre-spawn season. I think it's still a secret right now, okay? And it's not available in brown. So we're going to get one and we're going to hand tie one brown. So that's what we're going to do. That's what I'm thinking. So like I said, if you like this, uh, give me a share. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Um... So we can do more videos like this. There's a lot of this stuff that's coming down the pipe. Uh, like I said, this this chatterbait has been... It's like a sidekick to me for the last year, especially. This season, especially. Uh, last year, the, I just barely figured it out. Uh, I played with a lot of other chatterbaits. And there's always like something when I look at it. I'm very, very finicky about stuff. I'm very, very detail-oriented. So I look at certain things. I'm just like, dude, they, they got... That's just not gonna work, or uh, or I'll set the hook on something and I'll lose a lot of fish, and I'll say that hook is just not right. That that hook is wrong. It's too big, uh, things like that. Or when I, I throw a regular chatterbait out there, I start burning it and it just it just washes out, and I'm just like done with this one. This is not gonna do. And the other thing is, the other chatterbaits they're not consistent. See, that's the thing. The major thing about the more expensive lures is they always are more consistent. If you get, like for example, the Strike King 1.5 square bill, right? Everybody knows it. But it seems like every time I buy one, it's different from the other one. So I have to buy a couple of them to get two that run good. This is a different story. Every one that comes out of the bag, I would even venture to say 19 out of 20 of them are going to be the same. Okay, so consistency you're paying for consistency uh so that's a good thing so especially if we were ordering things from the internet it, it shows up it needs to be pretty consistent because we're not going to spend the time to send it back because it's it's a three dollar lure sometimes you're not going to spend ten dollars to ship it back so consistency is on your side it's a japanese product those guys are just they're just finicky about everything they just want everything perfect Everything from cars to fishing doors, you know what I mean? So, so then, anyhow, that's my setup. Technical difficulties. Like and subscribe. Uh, share with your friends. Hope this helped you. Helped you guys out. Uh, if you haven't never tried a chatterbait, it's it's just freaking deadly. Fish never seen it before. It just doesn't work on bass. It works on stripers too. We just released a striper video where I hooked myself in the foot. The biggest fish of the day came on chatterbait. Yeah, one more. One more to biggest go. Biggest two fish of the day Still came on the chatterbait. So... The chatterbait, as a side note, if you're fishing schooling yeah. fish and there's a this lot of big too, and yeah. small fish, it's a good time Ooh, to throw it because it, especially with the razor one. shad, the small fish will nip on the shad uh, trailer, but well, the trailer is not going to break off. It just stays there and it will attract the bigger fish and it will catch. The bigger oh, fish. All right. So, anyhow, uh, leave me questions down below if you have any questions. Uh, I'm that's pretty sure 20. I left a couple things out. Not At the same time, you know, that's that's all my secrets feature. on the chatterbait. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys catch them out there. And please, if you're gonna buy it through Amazon, click on the link below and buy that way. So that way, I get a little bit of cut of the money. So that way, I could make more videos like this. So once again, see you guys on the next video.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching, but stop freeloading. We need you guys to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook, and we'll see you guys on the next one.